going to talk about the designer of arguably the uh, most radical part of the original Reston Hickory Cluster. This is Charles Goodman. He was born in 1906, died in 1992 at the age of 86. He um, was educated at the Illinois Institute of Technology where Mies van der Rohe set up shop. Um, after he graduated, he came to the Washington, D.C. area where he spent the rest of his professional life. He worked for the Bureau of Public Works for the um, uh, Military uh, Air Transport Service and for the Treasury Department. And then in the late 1930s, uh, he set up his own shop. Next. This is what his office looked like. Um, Charles Goodman looks very shy, hiding in back with his eyeglasses looking larger than he does. Uh, now his most famous and one of his earliest designs was for the original National Airport Terminal. Next. Um, I'm sure you're all using it even today when you take a flight on Pan Am or TWA. Or <laughs> Um, now we're going to get into a Goodman uh, signature, which is floor-to-ceiling windows. Next. Uh, in the late 1940s, he went in two directions uh, after the war. One was to design custom homes, expensive ones. The other was to ally himself with a developer, in this case, an often Robert Davenport, uh, to design uh, affordable trapped homes. Now, notice on this, these windows. This is a signature that will stay with us for the rest of the discussion. Floor to ceiling windows at the bottom, opening parts of the window so you get a view and you get ventilation, but you get something else as well. And that is a prefabricated mass manufactured window that helps hold down the cost of these developer homes. Next. Uh, Goodman allied himself with uh, a couple of aluminum firms that were look, trying to find a market for the aluminum they were producing in such great volume during the war. Uh, Alcoa Aluminum and in this particular case Reynolds Aluminum which he worked with to design River Park in southwest D.C., still there. Next. Now we go to Holland Hills in Alexandria, which Goodman started to work on around 1950, worked on for over a decade. Um, here again, Goodman's signature windows. Next. More Holland Hills, more Goodman's signature windows. Next. And now another signature of Charles Goodman, which is the way he used the land. Here we have Holland Hills at the top and below a typical suburb just across the street. Notice the typical suburb. Every house has its own yard. They're all lined up along the street. Notice Holland Hills. The houses are oriented to take advantage of the landscape but they also are still separate, um, still detached houses. Each house has its own land. And it's hard to find a community center in all of this. Uh, nevertheless, it takes advantage of the landscape in a way that um, wasn't done in many previous developments. But we'll see his next step when we get to Hickory Cluster next. This is a view from inside a house in Holland Hills, Goodman windows, taking advantage of the landscape. Uh, now we come to the intersection of Charles Goodman and Bob Simon. Um, here we took, we take another step beyond the use of the land that you see in Holland Hills. We're going to go to Hickory Cluster next which was designed in 1962-63, built in 64-65. <clears throat> now, 
Next. This is one of the earliest uh, sales pictures of Hickory Cluster. The Goodman Signature Windows. And notice the verticals and horizontals. In some cases, the verticals and horizontals don't even have a function except to look breathtaking. Next. Uh, Hickory Cluster was originally Goodman Cluster and then Hill Cluster because it was on a hill. So there are many levels of Hickory Cluster and as Ralph noted, um, to get from one level to another you take stairs, but with Goodman's designs you take really <coughs> impressive stairs, very wide stairs. Here's one of his earlier drawings of uh, a possible stairway in Hickory Cluster. Next. And here's a stairway that was actually built. Um, you can see how they're much wider and uh, more impressive than uh, a stairway needs to be to get you from one level to another. Next. Now, here's the change that occurred when Goodman and Simon got together. Uh, instead of every house having its own yard and having trouble finding a neighborhood center, um, Bob Simon decreed that there will be townhouses in the middle of a forest. Who ever heard of that? Well, by saving the space, you freed up a huge common area to make a wonderful environment, much different from Holland Hills. But a second thing occurs here, and that is that each house has two orientations. One is toward a neighborhood, and the other is toward a forest. Depending on where you look, you have your choice. Next. This is a uh, satellite picture of Hickory Cluster uh, in the winter time without any trees. Next. This is a view through the Goodman signature windows in Hickory Cluster, the, the kind of environment you can see. Now on a personal note, uh, at our house, the back deck has been voted the finest recreation facility in Northern Virginia <laughs> as the result of a poll of neighborhood house cats, raccoons, <laughs> possums, squirrels, birds, and two litters of baby red foxes. <laughs> Next. Now, Goodman um, made some false starts. And it's interesting to see uh, how an architect tries and sometimes doesn't succeed, but nevertheless has an imagination. This is block three of Hickory Cluster. This is a huge neighborhood gathering place, uh, a large fraction of an area, of, of a, an acre in area. Um, this is a deck. The deck covers a parking lot that's invisible because of the deck. Uh, you drive into the parking lot here. And this funny shape here that looks like a bird's eye view of a piano is the grandest of staircases in Hickory Cluster. In fact, we sometimes called it the Grand Piano Staircase. Um, here's a side view next to <coughs> what we're looking at. This is the Grand Piano Staircase. The cars drive in here and become invisible. Great stairways, and above it, a neighborhood gathering center. Now, there was a problem. Uh, this was built in the uh, winter of 64, 65. Some corners were cut in uh, pouring the concrete. Apparently, too much lime was added. And every two years thereafter, there was a crisis uh, with the structure. Uh, finally, in 1998, uh, this was condemned by uh, Fairfax County and the uh, 
uh, residents of Hickory Cluster had to get together and raise uh, an amount of money that equaled 10% of the value of all real estate in Hickory Cluster to tear this down and replace it with next uh, a structure that still reflects the Goodman sensitivities. Next. Here's another false start. Goodman wanted to put a skyscraper in Hickory Cluster. Didn't happen. Next, another Goodman idea was to take the central part of Hickory Cluster, that huge common area, and you can't read the uh, writing up in the upper right-hand corner, but he wanted to put in this area a paddling pool, a model boat basin, an angler's pool, a swimming pool, <laughs> bath houses, and a music and dance pavilion. <laughs> and Bob Simon said no. <laughs> Bob Simon, as I understand, said these belong in the village centers. Um, well, uh, the central part of Hickory Cluster does not look like this. It looks like next, this, in a photograph taken by the Washington Post. Um, I think we can forgive Charles Goodman for his false starts and appreciate his magnificent successes in Hickory Cluster. I don't think there was any reason for him to hide way in the back of his office when that photograph was taken saw at the beginning of this discussion. I think Charles Goodman should come forward next, and here he is.